Good morning, beloved community of Verde Valley. It is so wonderful to be with you this morning. I'm Reverend Natalie Vorse from Unity of Toledo, and I was excited to have this opportunity to learn more about Verde Valley and just connect with the people that are there. Uh, when Amanda Sue asked me to do this, it was just my honor to be able to be with you and to really reach across the nation and have some time together. So I wanted to just take a moment to really connect. So let us take a, a sacred breath to begin. We take a sacred breath to allow ourselves to become completely and fully present to this now moment. I invite you to do this because what I know is true is that the God within you has prepared a message for you. I am simply a messenger and I'm here to join with you in that conversation and engage with you with that still small voice and allow it together to be amplified so that you are in the divine flow and you hear exactly what you need to hear today to further your own spiritual experience. Today, we will be exploring how gratitude in action can profoundly transform our lives using Unity's five principles as our guide. Gratitude is so much more than a thank you. It's a way of being. It's a practice that aligns us with that divine flow of abundance and peace and love, knowing God as our source. When we live gratitude in action, we put spiritual truths into practice in a powerful way. Let's dive into how gratitude comes alive in action through the lens of the five unity principles. So let's start with the first one. The first principle is God is absolute good and everywhere present. The first principle reminds us that God or divine spirit or divine mind is the source of all good. And that presence exists everywhere all at once. Gratitude begins with recognizing the goodness of God always around us, even in moments of challenge. Sometimes that's the hardest place to start. And so having a practice already set for gratitude really buoys us and allows us to get into gratitude when we do experience challenge. So the action of gratitude you know, what if we begin each day by acknowledging the omnipresence of God's goodness? When we practice seeing the divine in every circumstance, gratitude starts to become a natural response, even in adversity. This shift in perspective opens our eyes to the blessings we may not notice or we may overlook because we're so focused in one direction. When we begin to practice gratitude in action, it opens the scope of our field of vision and it allows us to engage in that vibration, in that energy on a deeper level. There is so much to be thankful for, such as just the beauty of creation. Maybe it's the support of a loved one and maybe it's the opportunity to grow. In the Bible, Psalm 107, verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. By consciously giving thanks for God's presence, we cultivate that faith, even in our struggles. And they are a part of the unfolding good in our lives. Let's move on to principle two. Our essence is of God, and therefore we are inherently good. We are the expressions of divine spirit. And gratitude for this truth is transformative. When we recognize the divinity within ourselves, we can see it better in others. 
And this process deepens our appreciation for our lives' interconnectedness. Action of gratitude for the second principle is how we show gratitude for the divine within us. By affirming the good in ourselves, we affirm the good in others, and we get curious. We look for it in others. And that is a fun experience when you have really grounded yourself to be in the flow of that second principle, anchored that in, and then look out on the world to truly see what is there in that oneness together. And that gratitude begins to just stir up and you begin to resonate with it. It becomes like this great buzz under your skin. You get to really enjoy understanding yourself and looking at others to find the God within. And the gratitude is always there. And this includes, you know, treating others with goodness, finding ways to serve, or just treating someone with kindness and compassion. Sometimes we need to start with ourselves, treating ourselves with kindness and compassion. I ask you to think about that inner voice. What is it practiced at saying to you? I did a lot of work around this. You know, my inner voice said things to me that I would never say to someone else. And I had to clean that up if I really wanted to get clear and really wanted to step into the second principle of unity. I had to acknowledge the divine within. And in that process, I had to really look at being gentle with myself and kind to my thoughts. It is a process that has grown me more than I ever expected. When you find yourself safe at home in your own thoughts, because there is kindness there, it's empowering. And it empowers you to look at your neighbor and love your neighbor as yourself. So by acknowledging these unique gifts within yourself and within others, I come to the Psalm 139, verse 14. It says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I love the idea of connecting to something greater than myself and still recognizing that all has been wonderfully made. Gratitude in action means celebrating our divine potential and our divine potential for ourselves and that of others. Letting this awareness shape us and shape how we interact with the world. Hmm. And then next up is the third principle. We are co-creators with God. Co-creators. This principle asks us to remember that we are 100% human and 100% divine. To co-create with God is to understand that we have full access to divine mind and we should be intentional in practicing our connection to it. When we engage actively in finding things to be thankful for, we raise our vibration through gratitude. And that vibration, that feeling, it attracts more of what we can be thankful for. You know, as well as I, that you match the vibration of the desire you want. And so through gratitude, if you meet that at its, vibra at its vibration and you resonate there with gratitude, more things to be thankful for will rise up to meet you. Gratitude isn't just a passive feeling. It's a tool for shaping our lives and shaping our experience. Hmm. So it is important to practice gratitude and allow this practice to seep into every part of your living, every part of what you experience. It can be a challenge, but when we ground ourselves in that second principle, excuse me, in that third principle, we realize we're not alone, that we realize that we are absolutely designed to connect with the divine within us. It is understanding and, and truly living from the understanding that the Christ consciousness is already within you. And you create from that point of flow. 
the action of gratitude in this principle is to make gratitude a daily practice. When through, whether it's through like journaling or prayer, maybe you really like like a mindful meditation or just moments of sitting in nature and just being in awe, in that quiet. Doing this intentionally, it helps us to focus on what you're grateful for. You know, what you're grateful for could, could be as simple as appreciating a warm cup of coffee, uh, a meaningful conversation, being authentic with someone, or maybe it's a lesson learned from a difficult experience. You know, when I became a minister, there was a woman who disagreed a lot with me, and she still does. And the true empowerment came when I became thankful for her. I began to see her as a teacher, someone who held up an opposing view so I could truly check in with myself. And at the point where I actually became grateful for her, there was a point of transformation for both of us to be in appreciation for what we brought to the table. And we turned what could have been a divisive experience into a loving relationship into a place where we come to the table just as our authentic self and we're not afraid to disagree what an important skill to have and every time i meet with her and i she begins to disagree with me there is a pause within me because of this practice that reminds me that i am supported by the power of love in this moment and I raise my vibration by being grateful for what seems to be a challenge. And in that process, two people got to really learn so much from one another. We often talk about that connection. We're just open about it. And it has empowered other relationships in my life to have that authenticity it's truly there because of the gratitude I felt for her, the gratitude she then in turn met me with on the same vibration. Hmm. I would say this is one of my greater lessons, especially when I first began in ministry. So then I want to reach out to the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. I know you can think of a place right now where there's some aggravation, there's some challenge, there's some difficulty. Meet it with a gratitude. Meet it with a practice of gratitude. Don't just meet it with thank you or try to push it aside, but truly look at what is there for you. To be grateful for. As we cultivate a grateful mind, we align with the creative energy of the universe, inviting more joy, more abundance, and more peace into our lives. The fourth principle through affirmative prayer and meditation, we practice being in full connection with God. You know, right now I am rereading Discover Your Divinity by Reverend Linda Martella Whitsett and Reverend Deanne Weir Morenzi. If you haven't read it, it is a rich read, uh, really outlining affirmative prayer in a very clear and wonderful way. And so I encourage you to check that out. Affirmative prayer and meditation, they open our hearts to this God's presence within us allowing us to experience divine guidance and divine peace. Hmm. It seems fun to go out into the world knowing that you have divine guidance and that you have a practice for tuning into it. So when you're caught in the moment, you remember to pause and you remember to tune in to that guidance. Gratitude is essential in prayer. It shifts us from asking for a condition to be changed. And it acknowledges at a deeper level that Christ consciousness within us. 
It's already in us and it's already there designed to expand our understanding. And so the condition becomes secondary as it should be. And we get to this place of cause. Where are we at this point of cause? And with gratitude, we step into that flow easier and easier. We affirm the 12 powers to support us as we allow divine mind to have full sway with us. I know when I pray, this has been encouraged through this uh, reading from Reverend Linda Martell said and Reverend Diane Weir Morency. I think you have to have three names to be the author of that book. But what comes out is how affir affirmations and um, affirmative prayer is when we anchor our affirmations in the absolute truth. And it's amazing to be in that space and then to really understand the 12 powers and understand that they are there for us. So in that prayer, we can ask that, that we employ the power of love, the power of divine order, the power of imagination. When we pray in this way, we bring that power with us to the next situation. And they are there to empower us. And so it's really interesting to step into that and have a deeper and deeper experience of living with the 12 powers and the five principles. This perspective really can empower a true shift. A true shift in our perspective actually reveals miracles. So the action of gratitude with this principle is that in your affirmative prayer practice, we begin by opening for expansion, which leads us to a high vibration of gratitude. Thank God for what is already here, right here, right now. And anchor your affirmations in spiritual principle, especially the spiritual principle of oneness. And the spiritual principle of what is the absolute truth. The truth that is not dependent on any condition. Just the absolute truth. This shifts the energy of prayer from one of asking God outside of you to change the condition to acknowledging the God within you that has already empowered you through the Christ consciousness within you. And it expands your understanding and it realigns you. It puts you, it helps you recognize your alignment with the divine. So in Philipp Philippians 4, 6, it says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, pray with thanksgiving and bring your requests to God. Bring your requests to God. I used to understand that of, of bringing them to something outside of me. But no, bringing your requests to God is bringing them back into the alignment of the divine where true shift can actually happen. That feels like a beautiful distinction to me especially in my times of need. Gratitude deepens our connection with spirit and aligns us with the highest good. And last, the, f the fifth principle, we live the truth we know. The fifth principle is all about putting our spiritual understanding into action. Knowing spiritual truth is not enough. We must live it in our daily lives. Actually, we get to live it in our daily lives. It is a, a wonderful experience to really uh, get to do that. The action of gratitude around this principle is um, gratitude in action means going beyond your words to expressing appreciation through your deeds. It's through your thoughts, words, and deeds. We live our gratitude by serving others, giving generously, and being fully present in the moment. There is nothing more powerful than when you are with someone and you are actually fully present. It feels so good and it begins to actualize both of you to raise your vibration and to that alignment with God. 
So look for opportunities to make gratitude a living practice, whether through volunteer work, small acts of kindness, or simply being fully present in your relationships. All of those things are putting it into action. So I find myself at 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. It says, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Hmm. Powerful. When we embody gratitude through service and love, we bring the truth of God's goodness into the world. So just to conclude today, gratitude is so much more than a feeling. It is a powerful spiritual practice that transforms lives and aligns us with the truth of our divinity. Whew, that's exciting to me. <laughs> Through the lens of Unity's five principles, we see that gratitude connects to us and to the ever-present goodness of God. It helps us honor the divine within. It shapes our experiences and it deepens our prayer life. And best of all, it calls us into action. So let us commit to living with grateful hearts, putting gratitude into action every day. And when we do, we not only transform our own lives, but we radiate love, joy, and peace to the world around us. Isn't that why we're here? Oh, it's been great to be with you, Verde Valley. Thank you so much for our time together. And I just look forward to hearing from Amanda Sue and how and more about your community. So thank you for letting me be with you this morning. And I hope that still small voice has really activated a message within you. And so we pray this today. Ah, let us return to the sacred breath. Mm. Loving spirit, we thank you for the gift of life, for your presence in all things, and for the divine spark within us. We live in gratitude right here and right now, and we see God in goodness in every moment. We employ the powers of divine order, understanding, and love to resonate through us as us, as we express our thankfulness through our thoughts, words, and deeds. What we know is true is that we are anchored in principle, and that principle is reflective of divine love in the world. And so we pray together in acknowledgement of the loving nature of the Christ consciousness in each and every one of us. And together we say, and so it is, amen, amen, amen. <laughs>